We good? Okay. So, Trig, we're in 5A talking about a thing called unit vectors and talking about a thing called vector component, which is going to be almost an exact instant replay of what we did in physics, but in an interesting twist, the physics, uh, the trig system is going to be easier. The physics system was actually harder than what the trig system will be. So anytime you're talking in math about unit, the word unit, that has two meanings, I guess. I mean, you have units like feet and stuff, inches, miles, seconds. That's not what we're talking about. Uh, if it's not in that context, unit is always a word that means one. So like there's a tens place, a hundreds place, a thousands place. Sometimes the ones place is called the units place. Like that's a fair synonym. Uh, when we talk about unit vectors in here, we're going to be talking about vectors that have a magnitude of one. And they're made up, a, they've made up a scheme with two special unit vectors and they've given them names. Uh, they're going to talk about I vectors. I vectors are always going to be along the X axis. A positive I vector would be headed then to the right. right while a negative I vector would be headed to the left. left. When we generate numbers for these, we're always going to use the cosine button on our calculator. There's also a thing called J vectors, which are going to lie on the Y axis, meaning that positive J vectors would be headed oh. up and negative J vectors down. down. We're going to use the sign button on our calculator to do that. To keep these straight shouldn't be a dramatic problem because the alphabet helps you. They've sorted these by either coincidence or purpose in alphabetical order. I is before J, just like X is before Y, and just like alphabetically, cosine would come up in a dictionary before sine would. So alphabetical order can help get from mangling those. What we're going to do with these vector unit vectors is make a thing called vector components. So like we learned in physics about a couple hours ago, an hour ago, there's a process called vector resolution where we can turn one vector into two. You spent last night's trig homework turning two vectors into one. We're going to just do the reverse. We're going to turn one vector into two. What's it called when you have two vectors and turn them into one? What's that new one called yesterday's homework? Result. Result. What we're going to do is take one vector and turn it into two. Those two are going to be called components. That's all information so far, and then we'll do some math in a second. So step in to the right. A mathy type problem based off of this would say we want to resolve a vector of a magnitude of three in a direction of 143 degrees into components. I'm going to do 3 cosine 143 on my calculator. And in the world of trig books, they have named the cosine component I. I. I'll put a plus as a separator. And then I'm going to do a similar computation that'll be 3 sine 143. 3 sine 143, and that's going to be. Okay. Calculator is my friend. I'm going to grab my calculator over here. So when we punch 3 cosine 143, I'm saying negative 2.396i. And then the old second entry trick is nice, just swap cosine for sine. I'm saying 1.805j. And that's it. That's all we're doing for the first maybe like four homework problems-ish. Uh, agree, this will be on 166. The first four, we just do that. Question about that? Is that it? Decimal point or a That's a decimal point. Is the first one also a decimal point? Yes. Questions there? You don't need a picture to do this. However, a picture might help illustrate what it is that you just did. Okay. They did not mention in this question the word from yesterday. What was the word from yesterday? Bearing. Bearing. They did not mention bearing. 
which means they're not doing bearing, which means they're doing the other scheme. What were the other kinds of measurements of angles called? Standard position. Standard position. So if they don't say bearing specifically, assume that you're working with standard position, where zero from August was where? On the right. On the right. 90 was up. 180 was that way. So if we moved in a direction of 143, the original vector was headed that way. What we decided to do was turn that one diagonal vector into two. Instead of heading left and up at the same time, we could first head left and then head up. This plus this makes this. Because how do you add vectors? What's the ruling on that? Adding vectors graphically by positioning them head to tail. So this vector plus this vector makes that vector. What we just did is we turned the 3 into a negative 2.396i, meaning we went to the left with the i thing. And then the j is positive because it went up. So we just turned one vector into 2. If you wanted to check it, what's a way you could check that? Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. This squared plus this squared should still make three. You can see with your eyes it went left and up, so there should be some negativity to it. You don't need the picture to do the math, but the picture kind of reinforces the math that we just did. In the homework, I think they draw you a picture. You don't you really have to use the picture. You just need to skim the picture for what's the magnitude, that's the length of the arrow they drew, and then just grab the direction from the picture as well, just, and then punch in. This cosine whatever, that sine whatever, it cosines the i, the other's the j, boom, there we go. Let's draw those. The main reason people do anything with vector components, as we talked about physics earlier, components make it easier to add vectors. If I give you this headed in some crazy diagonal direction, then I give you another one to head in a different crazy diagonal direction, it can be really hard to figure out what direction you're even going by putting two diagonal things together. So I'm going to highly suggest, if they give you two crazy vectors to add at two weird sort of diagonal directions, exchange them for i's and j's. What would be the i part of this first one? Five cosine seventy. Five cosine seventy. What's the i part of the other one? Six cosine twenty-five. Six cosine twenty-five. Let's just punch that in while that's fresh on our mind. I think I already did that, so I'll grab my paper and see if I did, and I did. I'm hoping for seven point fifteen in the i thing. Physics, we were having to draw pictures to figure out which component was which, sine and cosine, north, east, south, west. There was no standard way to do it. We just had to draw it every time. In here, cosine's always going to be the i. Sine will always be the j. There's no thought or choice involved. Anybody trouble getting the 7.15 or want me to wait a sec? J world and the top world? Um. Five sine seventy. Five sine seventy in this part. Six sine twenty-five. Six sine twenty-five. If you already punched this one, use your like second entry buttons. I'm hoping for a seven point two three J. Those are usually not that similar to each other. That's just the luck of the draw. Sometimes they're about the same. Usually they're not. Sometimes some of them are negative. Sometimes they're not. They ask you to find the sum as components. We're done. That's the sum as components. Game over. They usually won't stop there, but you can have a question about that. 
usually what they'll ask you for is to go back into having a magnitude and a direction. So to find a magnitude and a direction, we're going to have to draw a picture. So I go with my normal advice. Start off picture drawing by making um, we could, Sorry. that's not even necessary. In it's physics, that's necessary. In here, that's not as necessary. Just make ourselves a starting point dot. And then go back to what we just created. A positive I should head to the right, because that's based on the x-axis. Then at the head, I'll keep drawing. A positive J is up. This is 7.15. This is 7.23. This is what we see. What's our other item of knowledge? Right angle. We always want the angle at the, at the start point. So run a program. And this should give us... 10.17, and then we need an angle, which angle do we want? There's going to be two of them in the 40s. We want the slightly bigger one because it's opposite the slightly bigger 7.23 side. The angle is a little bit of a problem sometimes, but right now you're looking at a 45.34. And you're okay, but your odds of that angle being completely right is roughly one out of four. And I'll give you one more note to be of assistance to you. Question about how we got to here. And here's our trig issue. In this scheme of the world, We just went right and up. Okay, the thing that we just discovered was headed this way into quadrant one. In the world of trig, trig always, every angle is going to always touch the yeah. x-axis. So when the calculator gives you an angle, it's giving you this one, touching zero. So where do you live? It's just the number the calculator gave you. There's no hassle there. Anytime you're triangle drawing headed to the right and up into quadrant one, you're just good. But if we had gone that way, what would have forced us that way? A negative I. If this I had been negative, we'd have had to go left and up. If we went left and up, the calculator would give you an answer here that touches the x-axis. So what number are we now? How would you do the math on that? 180 minus. 180 minus what the calculator gave. It's also possible we could have been here. How could we have been forced to draw ourselves left and down? So both negatives. So if they're both negatives and we go left and down, which of these two would the calculator give us? The one closer to the 180, the calculator would give you this one. So how now, brown cow, would you figure out where you are? 180 plus. 180 plus it. Or we could have been forced to go this way. What would force you go right and down by these? A negative J. Calculator would give you the lower or upper? Upper. So how would you now know where you are? 360 plus. 360 minus. 360 minus. Unlike yesterday, Gio asked a question yesterday about how, when do you know whether to add or subtract and with which number? And I said, just draw a picture and think it through, because it's not worth memorizing eight different rules for eight different areas. This I would memorize, because I think it is worth memorizing when there's only four different rules. Do so you have to memorize it? No, you can draw the picture and reason it out. Okay? But if you're right and up, your angle is gold, so here, we ran our program, we got the angle, and by luck, we were in the gold quadrant. We just kept it. But if we had been somewhere else, because some kind of negatives got involved, this angle would have had to have been exchanged for some friend. Question about concept? So, 
There we are. How mark will be 166. One to four are these. Don't be deceived because they gave it to you in picture form. Again, the picture is just trying to communicate to you a magnitude and a direction. The fact that they do it in a picture format and I did it in a paragraph format, don't let that confuse you. You're just doing this. From five through, no, it's only five and six. How much when it goes to six? Five and six, there's two of these problems. Um, they want both answers. They have an A part due to sum as components, the I's and J's. And then there's a B part with the magnitude and the direction. And what's going to mess you up the most is going to be always the direction. Because a lot of people just forget to use this net. They run their program, they get an angle, they get all happy, write it down, and move on. Like that's the end of the process. This has to usually happen three out of four times. Uh, the angle has to change for the direction. Anybody question about presentation on the board or 166 in the book? Anything going on? It's important you understand how to do five and six today because what's going to happen tomorrow is we're going to repeat this exact same process but with varying. And that's going to add on like a step or two to this heart of the problem. So if you understand today, you already understand like 80% of tomorrow. Just tomorrow we mix in a bearing based step as well. Cut that.